Um, and let me try to try to do the ones on Zizek first. So uh, compare Zizek's nihilism to Chomsky's nihilism. I know Chomsky can't stand him, as he says Zizek is to theoretical and is too theoretical and non-empirical. Um, I mean, I think Zizek and Chomsky are very similar, are very similar, and Zizek admires Chomsky, in spite of the fact that Chomsky doesn't like Zizek. And I can see why, Zizek would, why, why Chomsky wouldn't like uh, Zizek. I mean, Chomsky, in spite of everything you say about, in spite of all the stuff I've said about it, how evil it, I think he is, is understandable. He's, he's, he speaks English. He's, um, uh, he, he's in some sick way grounded. Zizek is all over the place, and in that sense, too theoretical and non-empirical. Chomsky, though, is more evil in that Zizek seems to try to distance himself from violent authoritarianism. And particularly, and he, and he talks a lot, he's very anti-authoritarianism, and he talks a lot about that, and he's very, um, and he tries to distance himself from communism as exercised by the Soviet Union, although, again, he has this, I think, implicit, uh, and, and so, you know, half-joking, respectful Lenin and Stalin, and one assumes that if it's a joke, then it, there's some reality to it in the background. Chomsky is less apologetic, so as I've said in the past, Chomsky was so enamored by the, the Khmer Rouge, and I, I'd be curious what Zizek thinks of the Khmer Rouge, by, by the what he views as sincere efforts to bring about a truly revolutionary alternative form of society, that he was willing to whitewash their, you know, murder, the, 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 the destruction of the lives of millions of people, 40% of their own population, just the horrible nature of that regime, he's willing to completely ignore, right? And, 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 and really be a promoter of Pol Pot and, and, uh, and, and uh, the Khmer Rouge. So in that sense, I think Chomsky is worse. But I think, and, and I think Chomsky probably has a more detailed view of what the world would look like if his revolution was successful. But I think they're very similar. I think they're the same type of nihilist. And note that Chomsky is also anti-political correctness, anti-identity politics, anti, I think, I, well, I don't know what his position on LGBTQ. But they both have this wanting to see the world destroyed, wanting to see capitalism destroyed as its own end, wanting to see, in a sense, blood in the streets, wanting to see revolution. So I think they're very similar in their nihilism and, and more similar than I think Chomsky would like to admit probably. But yeah, they're, they're very different styles. But they are probably the most watched, as public intellectuals at least. In academia, Chomsky is far bigger than Zizek. But in, um, in, uh, I think in popular culture, they're probably the two most influential leftists out there. Uh, let's see. I want to be very basic here because there are many people who don't understand objectivism, who don't know what it is, but who have read much about Ayn Rand and have read her books and kind of want to know where she's coming from, if I can use that phrase. So let's just basically say what objectivism is. Okay? And make a long speech about it? Oh, not too long. No. No, because that's terribly difficult, you know. To begin with, it's a philosophy. Mm -hmm. It's a philosophic system. And philosophy is the science that studies the basic nature of existence. So it's a pretty technical subject. And anything I say briefly will not really do justice to my philosophy, but I can try to summarize well, it. Well, can I ask you some specifics then about it? Yes, sure. All right. How does, quote, I fit into the philosophy of objectivism? How does objectivism relate to me? the individual. What well, does it do for me? Are you a human being? Mm -hmm. Well, then it relates to you. It tells you how to lead your life and how to achieve things, how to be happy. It tells you the fundamental principles by which you can make your own choices. 
above all, it tells you that you have the means to make these choices, that your mind is valid, that the reality you perceive really exists, and that is epistemology. Mm -hmm. That's a branch of philosophy, and it, then it tells you how to make the base, by what principles to guide the basic choices of your life. Now, there are many philosophies that would offer that to an individual. Oh, yes. There are religions that offer it. There yes. are forms of government that offer it. How does... Not forms of government. That's politics. That's a different branch. That comes later. Well, yes, but governments in some areas, in some instances, would define for you choices or dictate oh. to you oh, yeah. how to live your life. Yeah. But I'll retract governments and just say religions are yeah. philosophies. How does objectivism differ from the philosophies that many of us have been exposed to in our youths? Uh, philosophies based upon religions, theologians, dogmatists. The f very first difference. Uh, objectivism tells you that it is not right, it is not proper to men to take anything on faith. Religion is a matter of faith. You accept a religion emotionally or because you were born to it. You have not chosen it rationally. What objectivism will tell you is that reason, man's reason is his basic means of survival. That is the most important faculty which he has and he has to guide his life and make his choices by means of his rational faculty. He has to make his own choices, but he has to know how to make them. It is immoral for him to act on his emotions, to be guided by the whim of the moment. That objectivism holds as very wrong, very immoral. And morality, in fact, consists of following your reason to the best of your ability. So that rationality is the basic virtue from which all the others proceed.